Okay, everyone, it's seven o'clock. Um, I'm going to call the regular council meeting Tuesday, June 6, 2023 to order. We'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Indigenous peoples of the Treaty 7 region and the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. We respect the histories, languages, and cultures of the First Nation, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continue to enrich our community. Okay, item 2.1, agenda. Any changes to the agenda? If there are none, can I get a motion? Sure. I'll make the motion that the agenda be for uh, June 6, 2023, be accepted as prepared. Okay, all in favor? Uh, aye. <clears throat> and carried. Item 3.1, May 16, 2023, regular council meeting minutes. Any changes to the minutes? Okay, if there's no changes, can I get a motion, please? To the chair. I move that the minutes of the May 16, 2023, regular council meeting be accepted as presented. Okay, all in favor? Aye. aye. Motion carried. Item 4.1. Introduction of Bill Messner, new fire chief. Welcome, Bill. Good evening, Council. Yes, I'd like to introduce uh, Bill Messner as our new fire chief. Uh, he comes to us from the Crow's Nest Pass as the deputy chief there. Um, so just wanted to bring him here, introduce him to you. If you got any quick questions for him, or he can say hi. Uh, <laughs> we'll go around the tables here. Uh, we got, uh, well, we'll start actually with uh, Mayor Kim Harris in the middle there. Nice to meet you, Bill. And then we have Deputy Mayor Joanne Fox to nice her to left, <clears throat> Joe Lambert, Councillor, Councillor Sean Bang, Councillor Justin Gustafson, Councillor Mike Knight, and Councillor Luke Brennan. Wonderful. Nice meeting you all. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome. It's, uh, we're happy to have you. I hear you're doing good things over there already, so I'm pleased to hear that. It's, uh, no, it's been wonderful. It's, uh, I've had a wonderful welcome. Um, you know, you have a wonderful team here, um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you. That sounds great. Uh, maybe uh, have council over one time to the fire hall there, and uh, we can just chat and have a look around. Certainly. Sounds Maybe good. For sure. Definitely set us up, Mom. Excellent. Thank you. Good to go. <laughs> Okay, item 4.2, RCMP Q4 update, Sergeant Greg Tulloch. Hi, everybody. Welcome back, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, obviously the big news, uh, I have returned triumphantly, uh, as promised. I know some people thought that wasn't probably going to come back, but uh, here I am, if you noticed. Uh, last time I was here, I was introducing uh, Sergeant Huff. Uh, he did a great job while I was away, uh, but obviously he's out. I'm back. Uh, and of course, that time uh, it was at the other place where I showed up to tonight, uh, not realizing that you've changed venues. So <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't have much to report that's out of the ordinary. <laughs> As standard uh, quarterly report that you've all been provided basically shows that uh, Constable Lee Fleur is doing all the cool things that uh, we'd hoped he'd be doing. Uh, looks to me like uh, that's going the way that I wanted. Um, while I was gone, uh, something that had been kind of in the works, they pulled the trigger on with how we um, collect information on what the members are doing in the area it used to be that they just uh, fill out some check marks on a on a spreadsheet and fire that off to me so i'd have access to it at the end of the three months uh, for the quarter uh, but now we've updated come into the 21st century and are using uh, an online system where uh, all the members can access either on their computer in the car or on their mobile phone a website where they can kind of real time right now I was here doing this thing and that data goes into a, a central hub which is then produced for me when basically whenever I want it but I ask for it every three months 
of course, brand new system. Yeah, it took a little, uh, little while to iron the bugs out. So I think when I look at the numbers, it's a little bit lower as far as our activities are concerned. And you maybe don't notice here at Crossfield because, of course, Jerem's doing all the things that we ask him to do. But uh, again, a little bit slow on the uptick uh, with the fellas putting their things in. But uh, we've ironed out some of the bugs. I've asked for some things to be changed for the way that those uh, that data comes in. And with any luck, it'll look quite a bit different next time, or at least back to the way that it was. Um, the thing that we've been dealing with uh, staffing-wise, not too much with the regular members, but our support staff, we've had a whole bunch of uh, in and out. Uh, the person in charge of all the support staff retired was replaced by somebody that had been working in the unit uh, prior, so she was able to pick up fairly quick, but most of the rest of the staff is also turned over. So we have been uh, short for a while. Um, on the uh, on this exact numbers, currently we're down one uh, because we've had somebody filling in for a while. We've got two incoming that'll have us right back up to strength. So uh, that part's good. Uh, the other thing staffing wise, as everybody knows, we've been firing members off to the north to help with the fires, which has been uh, quite a strain. However, the strain has really just been related to us. We've been ma maintaining uh, service delivery the same as always. Most of it's been overtime, uh, people going on overtime on their days off. So uh, that's kind of been the big thing that's been happening for us. And uh, really the only other thing, I mean, there's a, a real nice graphic here that has a lot of green on it. It says that crime is down. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it really means too much to me. When I look at all the numbers, and I did today, uh, ran through all the files that we've had here uh, in Crossfield from January 1st until now, uh, much the same as always. Uh, really the only things that piqued my interest at all was uh, theft of vehicles and even that i only found uh four of them between uh, trucks and trailers uh some catalytic converter theft uh a tiny little bit of car prowling that sort of thing but um really I'm, I'm not seeing anything that's telling me that we have any particular issues one particular uh trailer stolen full of all kinds of equipment and uh and think valuable property including firearms we ended up finding pretty much right away with all the stuff still in it they'd uh taken it to somewhere in calgary changed the locks on it and looked like they're probably going to come back to it later but uh, somebody was doing something good and found that trailer and brought it back pretty quick so uh really that was the thing that caught my attention the most and otherwise i don't know that i have too much more to report other than thank goodness i'm back <laughs> go ahead and ask me whatever you want to ask me you know i have a question for you um, i don't know it was about three weeks ago there was an incident west of town um quite a few uh rcmp like five or six of them ripping through limit mm -hmm. uh i don't think that anybody would have stopped if a kid had been walking across there i bet you they were going a buck 50 or more heading down there um just curious, uh, the couple of ambulances, a couple of uh, unmarked police cars. Um, anything you can tell us about that incident? I did have that come to me already. Uh, I was given a date and a time, and I asked the everybody that had been working, and I looked for a file. Uh, and as far as I can tell, it just didn't happen, at least not at that date and time. So I have no information. Uh, if there was a different date and time that I could look at, uh, certainly. But, I mean, I, I passed that information back through Jerem and uh, didn't come up yep. with any different dates. So uh, I'm not going to say that there were no police cars doing that, but we we typically don't have that many. I think there was a pretty right. big number. And uh, I don't think we blink an eye if it's one or two. Traveling together, I'm not 
I really couldn't picture what it would be. So mm. it's, it's unlikely that we wouldn't know, like even if say the Didsbury RCMP had come into town for something, chasing after somebody, usually that gets on our radar right quick. I can't imagine it was Calgary up here without us knowing. So, But even, even if they were chasing somebody, I don't think there'd be a couple of ambulances with it. Well, they certainly wouldn't be right in the stack. Like what yeah. you're describing, I'm picturing uh, the ERT team on their way to something, but right. they wouldn't have any marked vehicles yeah. and they certainly wouldn't have the ambulance right there with them. So yeah. they weren't marked vehicles. There were some were and some Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah there were some were, some weren't. Yeah. <clears throat> but there was the first ambulance because I had brought it to the Germans again, yeah. originally. And I was trying to remember the date. Um, the, uh, there was one ambulance in the midst of the group and then there was an ambulance after because yeah. I had actually followed the other ambulance. I was coming back from the industrial part of town. When I saw them, they were they were heading southbound, or sorry, northbound on the two way. So there was we think there was probably seven, possibly eight. Yeah. Police. Yeah, that, that kind of numbers is I mean, there's no way we don't know about that. How, how, how do we not know about that? Yeah. Plus two ambulances. We we certainly do. I mean, I didn't make any calls to AHS to find out where they were that night. But uh, mm. after yeah. uh, after I made the initial look into it and you know sent that back through Jerem to you uh, yeah. without any anything else to look at, I I let it die. Yeah, and I, I guess some, you know my concern is I understand that you guys have to get somewhere in a hurry sometimes, um, mm. but you're going through a thirty and then a fifty zone there with crosswalks with kids walking across there all the time if you're going that fast i don't i mean what are your rules well uh, on speed with lights and sirens on when you're going through so an area I'll like put it to you this way if you know the the time where we're actually driving as fast as we can uh, in pursuit of somebody for instance somebody who's done something really bad and it's really important that we catch them uh, our, um, we, we call them uh, member operational support services. They're on the other end of the radio working out of somewhere else. And they're, uh, supervising basically, as we call out what we're doing, where we're going, how that's, how that's happening. Uh, they would shut us down and tell us to turn around in a situation like that, unless that person is actively, you know, got a hostage with them or something of that nature. So, uh, Again, without knowing all the details, I don't, I don't really want to comment too directly, but it is a, a concern that's been raised to, to me many times over the years being a supervisor. You guys are driving too fast. You're doing this thing. You got no concern for the whatever. You're doing 100 miles an hour in a 30 zone. And many times I've actually been involved or been there and been able to see what's been happening as opposed to what's been reported to me. So I know what it looks like when somebody's driving extraordinarily fast. And when you're talking a buck 50 in a residential area, that's, uh, it was fast. It thing. was, uh, so I can see a blur 80, 90, hundred, certainly. Uh, <clears throat> and there's all kinds of reasons why that would happen. And we are authorized to do that. But of course, if we are doing that and something takes place, and we'll be held to account for our actions for whatever that is. So it's not a carte blanche uh, ticket to, to do whatever we want. But if the circumstance uh, requires that we act fast and act in that nature, then we can, certainly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, you guys get a carte blanche, you can do whatever you want. I'm, I, I, I'm just saying, you know, it is a, just a, a sensitive road with lots of kids going back and forth on it is all I'm saying. And well, I don't, we're just I don't. trying to look out for the safety of our community. Certainly. I yeah. understand. And, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed that I don't have answers. I feel like that should have been an easy one to find, but I didn't just send out an email. I asked the people, you know, face to face that have been working, uh, you know, day and night. So. Fair enough. I don't know what to say. So if you find something, just uh, send it on over to Russ. Certainly. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions? 
through the chair. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is there anything you guys, you know, days are longer, you know, we've got summer here, you know, beautiful weather. Anything that, you know, that, that uh, your group really, I guess, doesn't focus on, but, you know, maybe looks at it a little, little more closely when it comes to crime um, during the summer month versus, you know, the winter time? Without, you know, giving anything away, you know, like <laughs> what, what you guys focus on, but. Really, the, the issue that comes up with the change of weather being nicer is just people being out and about more probably more traffic related things drinking and driving that sort of stuff people are out and about you might see uh although like i said I, we haven't seen any of it yet here uh in the larger centers definitely uh, kids are out later checking cars that sort of thing um that's always kind of been the bane of our existence uh those those little things where they're checking doors, trying to get things out of it and get lucky and end up stealing a car because somebody left their keys in it. So those are the things that we're concerned about, but focusing on them, you know, that's a, that's a shooting, shooting fish that's in the lake not rather than a barrel sort of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. It's a really broad question. I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure what else to, to give you on that. Really, I would say just, seeing people out more and uh, trying to pay attention with us being out as well and watching what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Great. If there's no further questions, can I get a motion, please? The chair. The chair. Thank you. I'll make a motion of the RCMP quarter for update be accepted as presented. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Great. Thanks, Greg. Good seeing you. Thank you. I'll uh, come to the right place next time. <laughs> We're gonna, if we don't well, change it. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks. And 5.1 appointment of Russ Nash as, uh, sorry, item 4.2, RCMP, P4 update, did that one. Item 5.1, appointment of Russ Nash as interim CEO. Council uh, did a, an online vote and now we're just going to ratify it at, at council meeting and make a motion so if i get a motion please Major. go ahead i motion the council appoint ross nash as interim chief administrator officer for the town of cross on the back of june 1st 2023 and expiring august 7th 2023 and the council of draft an employment agreement for the interim position all in favor aye aye okay motion carried yeah, Russ. Stepping off. Poor Russ. Speed. Thanks. Okay. Item five point two: appointment of our community and protective services swearing of our seasonal bylaw enforcement officer. Thank you, Mayor Harris. Um, yeah, so as you may recall from the May 16th council meeting, council made a motion to uh, allow administration to proceed with a seasonal bylaw enforcement officer uh, for the summer months ending August 31st. Um, as such, Francisca Edi was uh, hired to fill that position. She's a criminal justice student and eager to learn about law enforcement. Um, so in order for her to be able to enforce town bylaws, we were required to swear her in as a bylaw enforcement officer. Okay, excellent. I'll meet you at the center table here. Francisca. And you're good. And if I get you to read that aloud. Okay. I, Francisca Edi, do solemnly declare that I will diligently, faithfully, and to the best of my ability, execute according to the law of to the law, the office of summer bylaw enforcement officer for the town of Crossfield. Great. Sign here. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Excited. <laughs> 
Okay, and if I can get a motion, please. Thank you. <laughs> For the chair. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I move that the council appoint uh, Francisca Edie as a bylaw enforcement officer for the town of Crossfield for a seasonal position expiring August 31st, 2023. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Excellent. Thank you. Item 6.1 bylaws. All right. Thank you again, Mayor Harris. Um, administration has brought forward to council the need to rescind bylaw 2009-04, establishing a volunteer fire chief. Um, this bylaw provides for the establishment and operation of a volunteer fire department and to name a fire chief. Bylaw 2009-04 is no longer required as former fire chief Ben Niven is no longer with the town of Crossfield and the new fire chief Bill Messner has been hired. Further, the recently adopted fire services bylaw number 2023-04 establishes the town's fire services and provides the authority for the CAO or their designate to appoint the fire chief. Therefore, the recommendation from administration is that council rescind bylaw 2009-04 establishing a volunteer fire chief as this bylaw is no longer relevant. Thanks, Russ. Can I get a motion, a motion please? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I move that the bylaw... 2009-04, establishing a volunteer fire chief, be rescinded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, Mayor and Council Business. Um, I attended a meeting with Rocky Peak School Division, and we just chatted about uh, potential new school and what that could look like and what opportunities uh, we could have with the school involving potential recreation and that type of thing. So um, we will be having a few more meetings on that and bringing forward um, a recommendation on how we're going to move forward, as well as uh, who will be involved in in a committee <laughs> at that time. Cool. And then I also, uh, it was a great uh, parade of garage shells this weekend. <laughs> that would Tons of fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Deputy Mayor Fox. Oh, I have nothing in the past, but I will be attending Pete Night Days uh, this weekend for June 9th and 10th, as well as Mayor Harris will also be attending. <laughs> Councillor Brennan. Uh, similarly to Councillor Fox, sorry, Deputy, Deputy Mayor Fox, uh, with attending Pete Night Days, but other than that, nothing further to report. Councillor Gustafson. Well, the, uh... Rockview Foundation has certainly been keeping me busy. I've had five uh, meetings since our last uh, council meeting. I've had one board meeting, uh, one, one Big Hill Lodge uh, project uh, committee with the uh, Cochrane administration with the, with their development uh, team in Cochrane last Friday. Uh, we had two Big Hill Lodge project committee mini meetings. As well, I had one this morning, and then uh, we had one Rock View Foundation brand strategy session as well. So really busy with the project and, and the foundation and, and keeping me hopping. That's it for me. Excellent, Council oh, Knight. No, no, go ahead. No, uh, uh, enjoy the, again, I enjoyed the Freight of Gradsville, grads, uh, Freight of Grad Sale. Got to meet a lot of new people in town. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to, to do that. Oh. Councillor Knight. Uh, nothing really report other than there's only three weeks left in baseball and crossroads. If you're looking for something to do on the week during the weekdays after five o'clock, roll down the diamonds. There's lots of kids having fun. Councillor hmm. Lambert. Um, nothing further to report except that I participated in the parade of grad sales. You did, but I didn't sell my grad. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I have nothing to report. Excellent. Can I get a motion, please? Through the chair. Go ahead. I move that the mayor and council updates be accepted as presented. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, um, 8.1 Department Director updates. All right. Thank you, Mayor Harris. Um, so my reports in front of you there, I'll just touch on a few items just to uh, to highlight them. Um, 
Although the Alberta government did announce in April that they increased the 2023 FCSS budget, um, we haven't received anything yet from them as far as us receiving an increase. So not too sure what that's going to look like or if it will, uh, but we'll keep you up to date if we do hear something. Hopefully we do hear soon. Um, because if we are going to get some more money, we got to make some plans on how we're going to spend that money. Mm -hmm. so, um, we did discover that the electrical service at the McCaskill Park concession building was not done correctly from the B from it, when it was originally constructed. So um, we are working with Fortis Alberta to determine what needs to be done to correct it. Um, in the meantime, we're not allowing any electrical to be used in that building. Um, it looks as if the power has been taken off of one of the power pole or the light posts that are there mm. and with the incorrect wires and all those sorts of fun things. So um, we're likely going to have to put in a transformer and run a new service to the building. So we'll see what that will all, how that will fall out. Um, as you have probably seen, the Splash Park has started up and it was opened. It actually opened a day earlier than we were hoping. So everything went quite well there. We'll knock on wood, make sure that keeps going. But um, the new controller is set up, it's running. We did have to replace one chemical pump, but all in all, um, the, the problems we ran into were quite minor and, and typical of, of a startup. So um, the public health inspector was there. She was happy with what she saw. So we were able to open it up uh, Thursday afternoon last Thursday afternoon, sorry, June 1st. Um, and then lastly, just uh, Seahawk has been working on updating the standard operating guidelines for the, uh, for the fire department. Um, they've got those all drafted. So now we have them and we're reviewing those right now. So that, uh, that whole uh, project is in, 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 in process. So that's about it for now. Excellent. Thanks, Russ. Questions for Russ? For me. Uh, just one from me on item six, community peace officer and RCMP. Um, you listed a few things here. I'm just curious if some attention to the industrial area as far as bylaw will be um, be completed this year as well. It will be, yes. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, they've started making a plan and uh, they've actually broken the town down into different sections and they'll be... They'll be moving around. So Good yeah, it will be. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And uh, then just a comment to the talent is looking really good. So um, kudos to all staff who have helped out with that, the mowing, the trimming, the flower beds, the street cleaning. I don't know if our streets have actually been swept that many times, but I like it. It looks good. Excellent. Thank you. We will pass that along. Yeah. Okay. And um, Director of Corporate Services, Lindsay. Good evening, Council. Uh, you, of course, have uh, my report in front of you. I'll just give you a couple of highlights. Um, there was 168 utility overdue letters that were mailed out this last billing cycle, which is down from 276, which is a good thing. Um, we have more people signing up for the automatic withdrawal pre-authorized program, so that's helping. Um, talking with our realtor over the last two weeks, we've had about five showings for the old CIBC building, no offers, but there is interest there. Um, on May 18th, we mailed 1,850 to 2023 combined property tax assessment and tax notices uh, with the due date of July or June 30th. Uh, we have two commercial properties along Railway Street in phase two of the tax recovery. Uh, of course, the next steps uh, in July, we'll be bringing forward a report with a set reserve bid, and the auction is scheduled for November. And uh, we also have eight residential properties, which are in phase uh, one of tax recovery. And the uh, May 2023 uh, accounts payable is also attached for your information. And that's all I got. Thanks, Lindsay. Questions for Lindsay? Excellent. Thanks, Lindsay. Can I get a motion? The chair. Go ahead. I motion that the department director update the step as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, correspondence. We have 2023 new local business report. Um, looks like we have a few new businesses, which is really nice to see. And then new orders of the harvest. Mm -hmm. which is really good. So I encourage all of council to uh, 
I encourage all of council to stop by if you can and encourage residents to obviously go buy things from these new businesses so they stay. And then an update from the Rocky View Handy Bus. Can I get a motion on correspondence? Through the chair, I'll make a motion that the information to correspondence be filed for information. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now can I get a motion to uh, move into closed session? Through the chair, I'll make the motion that we move in camera at 7.31. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. So the in-camera portion, no, sorry. Mm-hmm. Won't come on now. We'll go off. Can't get it on. Can't get it off. <laughs> Pull the plug. 